Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition. And this is January's Monthly Roundup. Hi folks, welcome to January. Um, and this is my monthly roundup video where once a month I sit down and I take stock of the games that come into my collection, the ones that leave, what I've been playing, and kind of like a wish list as well to see what kind of is on my horizon. And of course I invite you to play along at home. I think it's really important to take stock of the games you've got, things you like and things you don't. And more importantly, I just kind of love hearing from you guys. I think I think this is a really fun video. It's definitely one of my favorites to make. Um, so thank you for watching. And if you haven't seen it before, um, you're welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here. I do things other than reviews sometimes. I um, really enjoy talking about board games So this is kind of that outlet for me to be able to do so and to like reach out and connect with you guys and hear about awesome games that I've not heard of just about yet so this video is broken into um, like three or four parts, but there's gonna be a bit of a change to how this works. And I'll explain that a little bit um, because this is January or at least the end of January. Should we all be cheering yet? Hurrah, <laughs> thank God. Are you all waiting for your paychecks? <laughs> I know we are. It's been an incredibly, incredibly long month. I don't think it's really fair to have like a five week month straight after Christmas. So, so harsh, um, but of course with January um, and of course Happy New Year to everybody comes this idea of making resolutions. Now do you believe in making resolutions? Do you bother? Like I'm the sort of person who thinks every Monday is kind of a new opportunity to set up a resolution of one sort or, or another to turn over a new leaf to making everything better. So as you can probably imagine New Year's is um, a worrisome time for me but one where I really like to I don't know take stock of things do you guys do that too? I, I, I like doing that a lot. In fact, I do with my board game collection all of the time. So this year I made two resolutions um, and they're both vaguely inter interconnected. Um, and so the first one was um, kind of, I suppose, of a more personal nature, but also applies to board games, which was I wanted to make my life more simple. I have a tendency to overcomplicate things, um, to not put my foot down when I should. I say yes far too often. And I really just wanted to feel a little bit more in control of what happened around me and to make everything easier so that, you know, it would be easier to do good things. Um, and so this is definitely the case with board games too. And this corollary kind of developed into um, that when it comes to board games that we want to play more of the games we already have instead of worrying about new games. I think last year we really hit our peak with the number of games that like we acquired, that we played, that we eventually got rid of and we just decided that I wanted to spend some time I guess with you know our own games. So this makes this portion of this monthly rented video very difficult because it normally starts off with new games I've acquired or things I've traded for and to be fair there's absolutely zippo pretty much on these lists but that doesn't mean there isn't still stuff to talk about. Um, and so I'm gonna focus more on the games I have been playing or the games in my collection I'd like to get to next. Um, and of course, um, I still I still wanna hear from you guys about what you've been playing or what you might like to get or maybe what you got over Christmas because there wasn't a monthly roundup video for December because it turned into an award show. I, this happens every year, which means there's a bunch of games I got around Christmas that you guys know nothing about. So you'll have to hear them about them as I play through them. And so, of course, this is, you know, round out this little preamble with, you know, did you make any New Year's resolutions and why? Um, you know, do they mean something to you? Um, I think they're I think they're nice, right? I think they're kind of pleasant. I think there's, they're harmless for the most part. And if they encourage you to do something good for yourself, I don't see any reason, you know, not to follow them. Um, so that would be kind of good. So we're going to start out with the new games to my collection. Um, so this is probably going to be one of the shortest monthly roundups ever. <laughs> um, not really. Um, so actually we bought absolutely nothing this month. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely nothing, except, and of course there's always an exception, isn't there? So last weekend I went to a convention here in Cork in Ireland. This is called WarpCon and I've been going for many, many years. It's like a university based convention and my husband's been going since time and memoriam. And so every year he always goes to meet up with his friends or people you knew or stuff like that. And it's become my tradition too. So this year we went to work on and we played board games all weekend. Um, it was actually really, really fun, I have to say. It's very kind of chill con. We just kind of 
got a table, sat down, took out some games and started to play and you know people would join us and, and things like that. Um, and I've almost entirely forgotten where this story is going but hang on I got back. So um, we normally buy something at WarpCon. I don't know if there's, do you guys when you go to conventions you have a little bit of money set aside you know to buy a game. The problem was we couldn't find anything we wanted to buy. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've like exhausted my wish list or very very close to it. So I was a little disappointed, you know, when you think you like finally have a, I'm allowed to buy a game and there was nothing worth buying. Um, so we caved, we did buy one thing and that was the Wingspan expansion. Yes, the one in the purple box with the snowy owl on the cover. Um, so at least we felt like we came home with something. Um, I'm not sure if expansions count as full games. In my eyes they kind of do, like it's still, it's still like buying a game. Or is it? I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you count as an expansion like buying a game? Or is it like buying an add-on or you know some like extras for your game perhaps? I don't know where this falls. Um, but that is the only game we've bought this month and unsurprisingly the Wingspan expansion is very much like Wingspan. Just more birds and some slightly different abilities. <laughs> so uh, yeah Wingspan the legacy continues on. Um, right so those are all the games I bought this month. Um, I don't know if I'm proud of this or not. There's a part of me that finds it weird that there isn't board games coming in the post. There's also a part of me that likes that we're playing our own games and I'll talk about that now in a little minute. But um, I think when you're used to doing something some way, you know, when you're used to having an influx of games, it feels weird not having it. Don't know if this is a bad thing or not, it just, I guess it's just different. A little bit different. Um, I did have one other board game come this way and this was a review copy of Grey Eminence and my video for that has already been released. Um, and it is a game for Kickstarter, a political game for Kickstarter. I think you have to be kind of mad to go down the politics route. I think it's such a dangerous place. Um, and I don't, I like obviously I wish the Kickstarter much success. I think it's a very good game actually. Especially if you like politics. Politics mean not a lot to me. They probably should because politics affects everybody. Um, but I do think that um, Grey Eminence is really well put together. If that's your kind of thing, it's definitely worth looking at. And it'll be live on Kickstarter um, this Sunday. Um, the second um, and that sounds like I'm trying to sell it I'm not really um, although you should check it out this is just something I suppose that I got to play and get to talk about I also really like my intro video for that I spent a lot of time thinking about how to make something shadowy and politically and um, I'm really chuffed with how it came out but that's the only review, co review copy I received in the last month and I'm very thankful for that because as sad and all as this sounds guys I'm still getting through my Essen review pile <laughs> I think it's what like I just I thought I'd be through so much sooner but then I'm like I put out one video a week which is technically three videos a month so you know if you've got 12 13 review copies that's four months worth of, of stuff I'm down to the last two <laughs> the last two so you'll have those to look forward to soon and they're not last on the list because you know they're they were the worst um they're really really exciting actually I'm looking forward to that and a new Empress for title to talk about woohoo um and so you'll be hearing more from those soon I think I left the small ones till the end so that when I was really worn out and tired um it would be something fun to play <laughs> something light and easy um so yeah more more about those soon so that's basically been my inbox it's been really really tiny and um, what about you guys like have you also been strapped for cash on January and not bought any games or did you make a resolution not to buy new games I saw a lot of people doing that who were trying to focus on their own collections and I'm like cheering inside because that's what my channel is all about I want you to have the best collection for you not like an over bloated collection I don't want you to buy absolutely everything you should buy good stuff and stuff you love and keep it you know, it's not that difficult a concept. <laughs> okay, so phase two um, is normally where I talk about trades, but I have made no trades. Um, I'm not sure why. I've been trying, I have a good number of games right now that would be great for trading um, because we've kind of thinned out the collection a little bit. The more we play with it, the more we go, well, do we really need to keep this? Probably not. So I don't know what's happening on that front. I think we may try a sales post now that February starts um, because people might have money again and they can invest in something really shiny like a Vital Lasarda game. I've seen lots of pictures of On Mars. Have you played it yet? I really like the look of it. Um, I'm very, very interested in that. Um, other games that are coming out actually that vaguely had my interest or at least made me think a little bit is, I don't know if you guys noticed, but they're doing a lot of like 
reskins or fancy arting up um, of older games. Like, so Rococo was one. Um, I own Rococo, it's a game about dressmaking in the Rococo era. Um, and it's out of print, or at least, it's not actually out of print, let, let's be honest here. I believe it's hard to get in America, but here in Europe you can buy it through like, you know, German eBay and it comes with English rules and everything in English. So I don't know how that works, but apparently it's been difficult to get for some time. So now they've fancied it up with some beautiful Ian O'Toole artwork and you'll be able to spend an exorbitant amount of money on this new shiny copy. And so when I heard that this was coming out, I was like, it's been a while since I looked at Rococo. I should probably try and play it. In fact, I promised one of my viewers a review of Rococo a really long time ago, and I still feel guilty about that. Um, but we took out Rococo to play it, and we didn't get through the whole game. You know, never just have one of those evenings. By the time you set the game up, you're just like, I'm too, I'm too, too tired. Um, but I had a good look at it and I don't think it's a game that needs a lot of deluxifying. I get it, it looks a little 90s, but like what are you deluxing other than the art? Like that's all that's in it. Like some, some pieces of cardboard, you know, you've your own player board, some cards, and then this big beautiful board. So I'm not sure where the money's going for that, um, but I think it's a bit crazy, that price for it. Now the second game that's getting deluxified that I was super interested in is Kanban. So Kanban is a Vitella Sarda game, but it's normally it's normally published by Stronghold Games, which is kind of unusual. All of his stuff comes from Eagle Griffin Games, and they have, you know, really deluxe stuff and very pricey things. And as, you know, so Kanban is now going this road and with like recess boards and better art. And I was like, does Kanban need this? So while we're at WarpCon, I played a game of Kanban. Um, first thing to know, still a very good game. It's a, it's a game about making cars in an assembly line in a factory and deciding which zones you're going to go to to perform which actions and trying to be as, what's the word, as careful with your time as possible or as that's the word, efficient with your time, how much time you have as possible. Um, I liked it a lot actually when we first got it. That might have been last Christmas. So, because I'd already played it like three times but I needed a reminder to play it this time. It's still a really, really fun game. I liked it a lot. And you know what, I think it could actually benefit from a little bit of deluxifying. The board is very, very cluttered and a little crazy. I think more things could be marked on it. Uh, or, you know, more reminder kind of text to tell you what each kind of section does. So I could see this being interesting. I'm very curious to see how much it's gonna cost. I'm pretty sure it's an arm and a leg. So I'll probably be sticking with my Stronghold Games version. Um, but like this seems to be a new very popular trend of you know let's make the game look better the exact same game and charge you loads for it. Um, how do you guys feel about that? I know me I feel a little bit shafted especially when you've let's say if you bought the older edition of the game recently and then they're like oh look there's a new shiny version like Prada Porter is another one that did that. I put a lot of effort into finding a copy of Prada Porter of the older one and then a couple of months later it's like hey here look new shiny one with new art and like half the price and it's just like Puh. Poor, poor, poor. No, sometimes it's nice to have the shinies, right? We all get it, especially if it's a game you care about. But just this notion of, we're not gonna make new games, we're just gonna make the old games better. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure totally where I weigh in on that. So basically, yeah, that, <laughs> that was an amazing tangent. Um, but yeah, so I think the point of this section was there's been no trades this month, <laughs> which is fair enough. Um, but what there has been is kind of a playing of some of these kind of older games. Um, so of course I want to hear about your trades, if you made any. I don't know, maybe were people just not trading in January? You know, after Christmas, people were busy or tired or fed up or whatever it was. Maybe some more trades will come my way soon. Alright, so that's that second section. So the third section, which I kind of jumped the gun a bit there with talking about all these new releasey things, um, is games that we've been playing. So this is a section I think that's always been here, but never talked about a lot of because I was too busy talking about new games. God, it's kind of sad to think you devolved into that, isn't it? Okay, so the first game I want to talk about that we've been playing a lot this month um, is a game that's been on my shelf for ages and I haven't touched. Um, and this is Max vs Minions. So Max vs Minions is a game that comes in an absolutely ginormous box. It's made by um, a video game company, which makes it kind of unusual. Um, it's a very elaborate and fancy game with like pre-painted models and beautiful boards and there's a load of stuff in the box and for the price of it, it, it they probably should be charging more. Um, and it is a game basically like 
basically it's a cooperative game where you run through like 10 scenarios and you're all like little people in robots and you have to like defeat the boss or defeat objectives um while all the other minions in the game kind of automate well move around you like in an automated fashion so there's an order in which they will do things so it's a little like those lane games you might see in video games online and i think that's where it gets its inspiration from um and it's, it's, well, it's like at its core, I suppose what it really is, is it's a little bit like Robo Rally. So you lay down, you know, your orders, um, it's like it's a programming game and you decide what order everything's going to happen in. And then off they go, you know, throughout the board, kind of like how the, the computer does it. Um, and I think it's actually a really interesting thing because also you get to draft your cards that you kind of add to your program. Um, which makes it a little bit more interesting than just like slapping things down in the right order. It was really fun. Originally, when we started playing this, we had four people, we had a full team, and we got to about seven missions, right? We were playing this like once a week or once a fortnight for a while, and then we just stopped. <laughs> people got bored of it. We didn't play any more of it, and I've been lugging that big box around every time I've changed how the board games are organized. Um, and finally we were like, we're going to finish this. We're just going to do it, just the two of us, and we're going to finish it. <sighs> so we sat down um, to play it, and we only had you know, three missions left to go. And I don't want to give anything away, because it is one of these games where you reveal stuff out of an envelope as you go along, and you unlock different things. And there is a plot. Um, but the first thing we noticed about it, I suppose, after a number of plays, is that it can get kind of similar because it's the same cards each each time same type of cards and especially if you developed a strategy that you particularly enjoyed you know drafting the same cards you know number of times you could do it every game um i do think the game however is very very fun and it's put together like really really well and i think you could have a lot of fun um with your friends with this um especially as you try to not get in each other's way and try to help each other and things like that um, and overall, I think it's a really, really fun game. Um, I was glad to finish with it, though. It was hanging over my head for quite some time. Um, and it's, you know, move, it's moved on to the for trade pile or whatever it is. But Max vs. Minions, I think, is it's actually really cool. There's a lot in it for what, for, you know, for the price you pay for it. I think you get a lot. There's good value for money there. And definitely fun to be had kind of with your friends and kind of that co-op setting. So yeah, so that was, the, that was the first big game of the month, Mechs vs. Minions. Um, the second thing I suppose I should talk about is something that I got slightly obsessed with. <laughs> so coming up to Christmas, you see you guys don't know this, aha, uh because -huh, we have no monthly round of December. <sighs> just, just too busy in December to do two videos. Um, I got a copy of Russian Railroads. So spoiler alert, warning, whatever you want to call it, Russian Railroads is indeed out of print. It's a very expensive game. I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to try it. I got sick of people talking about it. I like Russia. I like railroads. It sounded great. So um, coming up to Christmas, I had enough money to like throw some, throw some money at somebody and, and like, let me have their very expensive game. Um, so Russian Railroads is from Z-Man Games and it is in fact a game about, yes, technically. See, the internet got mad at me when I called it a train game. And I think it is a train game. You build particular tracks, right? Um, and what you have to do is, this is a, a worker placement game, is you got your little guys and you put them out on the board. And uh, they will be do, do particular actions that will help your train be better. Um, the curious thing about this is that your train, um, you start with like four little tracks on your player board and like one little black wooden piece and you move it along the track to get particular bonuses. But what really happens is you actually want to upgrade the quality of your track to slightly different wooden coloured pieces um, to be worth more victory points. And as you move along your tracks there are bonuses and things to unlock as well. And all of this, you know, is fueled by this worker placement board. Um, it's an unusual game, right? Because you know, for me, it's about for me, it's about trains. For I can see why people would think it is basically about victory points because it's unusual, right? Because the start of the game, round one, maybe you'll get like five, six victory points, right? Um, by round like two or three, you're getting maybe 20, 30 points around, and then by the last round, and I think it's only five rounds you play for, you can get like two hundred and ten points. 
or at least my husband can. I didn't quite get that many points, but it really, really escalates. And I, I think that's really fun. I love watching, you know, your progression as well. Um, as your train gets longer, which means you get better multipliers. There are more things you can do, or you all of it is about moving things up various tracks. Um, you know, and and whatnot. I, I really liked it. It just really appealed to me. There was something, I have a thing for player boards. I like a good player board. So I never had to get um, confused. It's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to move my train from here to here. How do I do this? Well, let's look at the worker placement board. And you know, and then there's the whole entire battle for who gets the best spot on the board first for worker placement and you know, all that good stuff. Um, the thing about it was though, one that, that I enjoyed playing it, it's the first game in a while that basically got me thinking about what would I do next time I played this? So like the first time I played it, there are four tracks. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna like go up all these little, little tracks like a little bit to get all the bonuses and see what happens, right? And I did okay, didn't do particularly well. So then I was like, the next time, I'm gonna be the first track on the board. So this one's like the longest one. And I was like, I'm gonna get that maxed all the way along with all the different color trains inside of it to, you know, to try and win. Um, and I tried that and I got to a particular point in it, but I didn't I didn't get it as far as I would like because you can't do everything you would like because you're playing with somebody else and they steal your stuff and get in your way. Um, but it was still an interesting strategy. It didn't quite work out the way I'd, I'd intended. And then after that, I was like, well, I want to try. There's like a whole track on the bottom of the board, right? That you can fill in with like your trains as you upgrade them. Um, it's like a, not quite a railroad track, but it's like a dot of purple things. You can tell the theme is really important here that I knew what was going on. But I was like, I want to get to end, the end of this track this time. So I tried doing that um, and it went kind of better. And then I was like, really, you need to be focusing a little bit on the trains and a little bit on the track. So I'm all set for the next time we play, but it's been forever since I've had a game do that to me where I was like, next time I want to try this, or is this even possible? Like I was talking with my husband, I was like, is it possible to get the black train in the first line all the way to the end within the five turns? And we were mathing it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm normally not one like that, but there's something about this game that made me just want to maximize it. So I've had a, I've had a lot of fun with it. My husband likes it less than I do, which is really really lame. Um, but I'm glad he hasn't solved it. He has a tendency to solve things where you can math them out and then just do the same thing every time. So I'm glad that didn't happen. But yeah, so that is Russian Railroads. I I had a really I had a really good time with it in a way that I hadn't anticipated. But I was also delighted because it was a very expensive game. It would have been really disappointing if that had been it. Um, right. Okay. So next. So I already talked about Kanban accidentally earlier. Um, but it was, it's one I wanted to play because of the, the reprint um, and it's still good. I've decided I, I definitely like Vital Lasarda games. I never get to play them as much as I would like, but they never leave me feeling stupid despite how complicated they are. And I think that's a pretty special feature. I always just feel when I play them that I haven't fully worked out how everything fits together yet, but I do know all the mechanisms. And I'm like, well, this will go to this and this will go to this, but I'm not comfortable enough with it yet to develop a real strategy. And I feel the same way about Lisboa, despite having played it a number of times. I don't, I have a rough idea where I'm going, but I'm not all the way there, but I don't feel stupid for not knowing. Like, I don't know, That's pretty. I think that's pretty smart. There are other games that definitely just make me feel like I'm just not on the same wavelength as everybody else. Um, but not that, so I'm gl I, and it was nice to come back to Kanban and have it all kind of fall into place a little bit. Like I still don't have a plan. I, I, make, I make cars the color that is requested of me, <laughs> but beyond that, I have no bigger vision. I need to develop a bigger vision. I think that comes though with more plays. Um, and I think, you know, value for money wise, Vitella Starter games are very, very expensive, but I'm pretty sure you could play them forever and they wouldn't run out or get samey. You know what I mean? You'd still have some like really complicated puzzle thing going on there. Um, okay, so next game I'm gonna talk about is one that I don't own, but one that I got to play at WarpCon and I thought you should hear about because it was really, really, really awesome. Um, and this is Wavelength um, by Wolfgang Warsh. Um, so some of you may know Wolfgang Warsh um, has made wonderful games like the Quacks of Quidlinburg, The Mines, The Tavern and Im Tiefenthal. You know, I could go on. He's having a real streak at the moment. Pretty sure he's one of my favorite modern designers apart from Stefan Feld. 
But I, I love the stuff he puts out. So Wavelength was a game that's on Kickstarter and it's a party game. And I think that's probably the reason we didn't back it. Um, because A, we don't have enough people for parties. And B, Kickstarter. <laughs> so a friend of ours got a hold of this and she was like, oh, you should try and play it. So Wavelength is this really unusual game where you, you have this big disc, right? And inside of the disc is like a wheel that has like a pie chart on it. There's like a very narrow section of the wheel, like, like this, um, where it's orange, right? And it's got a series of points written on it. And what the aim of the game is, is that you're given a clue. So it'll be like, they'll be kind of opposite ends of the same spectrum. So like controlling, not controlling, right? Let's say man, you're imagining me here with my disc um, to the left and to the right. And the person who's giving the clue wants the the, per, the person they're telling the clue to to have them rotate the disc so the answer is where the pie is pie piece is in the back i'm not explaining this very well i'm not gonna lie i've only played it like once or twice and i got confused a lot but the, the thing is it's got a, a piece in front of it so the clue giver doesn't or the person receiving the clue doesn't know what the pie chart is so you'll give an answer let's say between controlled and uncontrolled and you might go like the ocean right and obviously that would be the ocean is something that's very uncontrolled so you want them to be in that part where the pie chart is up at the top um and it's like it's kind of like, it reminds me of, it reminds me a bit of the mind which is very strange because in the mind you don't talk at all but it's this idea of where did i think i would put this answer <laughs> Um, we had so much fun with it at WorkCon. It was hilarious. I was terrible, absolutely terrible. Apparently I am a Sith and I only deal in absolutes. It, it might be possible, I don't know. I find it hard to think in the middle. But um, the fun part obviously is coming up with these questions that you're asking each other and you play in teams. Um, so you're like, I don't know. I, we, I, I don't know how to describe it, we laughed a lot. It was very, very fun. Would absolutely play again. Wish I owned it. Um, but it's one you might want to have a look for, especially if you're into party games. It was just like another level of party, which is always positive, I think. Because um, I don't own many party games. But I really, really enjoyed Wavelength. So um, there goes Wolfgang Warsh, like hitting it out of the park again. Um, as he kind of has a tendency to do nowadays. So what have you been playing this month? Actually, you know, what, what were you really excited to get to the table? Or did you have any real cool experiences you want to share with the group and tell us how you got on? Um, gaming, I think, is just so much fun and there's so much potential in it. I love, I love hearing what other people have been up to. Um, so the final section of this video um, is the part where normally I would tell you about games that are on my wish list. But because that seems to have, you know, disappeared a bit, I'm going to talk to you about the games in my own collection that I'm really looking forward to playing more of. Um, so the first one of these is Kanban, because we mentioned it earlier. Da -da -da -da. Um, I'm not surprised. I, I felt like I was just getting back into it and I really, really wanted to play another game. Um, the second one is Barrage. Now, I did get to play Barrage at WarpCon. Um, it was a game I had to shut down early because... Well, there was only two of us playing Barrage and then two more people arrived. So we were like, okay, we'll, we'll play a game with everybody. You know how that goes. But I played it long enough to get a little feel for it and try and remember how it all worked. And you know what? I like Barrage a lot. Um, I hate how it's made. <laughs> hate how it's made. But the gameplay is really, really fun. And it's one, it's one I want to play again now that I feel like I have a much better handle on it. It took me a very long time to understand. So... Barrage is a game about manipulating water and putting it in dams and generating electricity. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is indeed the theme. But I was I was misunderstanding how the water droplets came from like the sky down or how you got energy from the water in your dam. And I feel like I finally solved that on Saturday with, with basically my husband announcing everything out loud as he did it till eventually it kind of clicked and I'm like, Ha, that's what I'm missing. Um, it does have a very cool player board. I think that also helps me be attracted to this game. And you've got a wheel in which like you put all of your resources and then you know as you do more things the wheel comes back to you so you get your resources back. So you don't ever really lose them. You temporarily misplace them. 
Um, and Boris just has something very interesting about the way everything connects together to make energy, you know, to make it all flow. Um, and I liked it a lot. I, I wish I didn't like Barrage. I didn't want to because I was just so annoyed with the damn thing. Um, but it turns out it's actually a really solid game and I definitely want to play more of it now when it's kind of fresh in my head. Um, so yes, <laughs> there's that. And the third thing I want to play more of, um, and this is one that came in the Christmas pile, is Vindication from Orange Nebula Games. There we go. So, what's Vindication about? This, this Vindication, I think, is probably the most difficult game to explain. Um, because it doesn't, its story doesn't necessarily relate to what's happening on the board. But once you get the what's happening on the board part, you're good. So it's essentially a thematic Euro game in which um, you have been kind of kicked off your ship for being like an awful person. And the aim of the game then is to vindicate yourself, hence the title. And you can do this, um, you know, by acquiring different attributes or traits, um, you know, to better yourself as a person, which is a really, really cool idea. Um, the game itself is about pushing cubes around. It's about like, well, if I do this, I can put this cube here and this cube here and then take them off to do other things. It's, it's a cube pusher at its core and very Euro gamey. Um, it's very, very pretty. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of ohms. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to think on the spot. It's pretty and it's fun and I've never done very well at it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm missing out on something. I thought the last game we played I should have done better, but I didn't. So I'd like to practice and spend a little more time with it. The really nice part is it comes with game trays inside of it. And I have the real tale version, which apparently is no different than the Kickstarter version, which is kind of amazing. Um, but you get little game trays for each character, for each player, and it makes setting the game up really, really fast. I think this is the first game I've had with like proper game trays. Although Wingspan does have game trays, right? It's got those plastic things. Um, but it helps the game set up really fast. It actually doesn't take very long to play a game either. Um, and it's one I, I really, really like, but it's one I feel like I need I need more time with. So those are the games that are on my agenda. I'd, li I'd like to hear what's on yours. What's sitting on your shelf that you've been meaning to get to for ages? And what's stopping you? Why don't you just take it out tonight? Read the rule book, um, punch it, do what you gotta do. Get it played, because otherwise you'll never know what you're missing out on. Maybe it's terrible, that's fine, then you'll know. Maybe it's brilliant, and then you'll be like, wow, I'm gonna play this every night for a month. Um, I always, like, as someone who bought a lot of games too, I like getting to them, in a, uh, at a, I like getting to them because you don't know what's inside exactly, right? You, you just don't know yet. So go and find out, find out what is good, and report back and tell me so I can also know. Um, so yeah, so that's everything I've been looking at this month. I'm dying to hear about your stuff. Um, otherwise, Board Game Inquisition is trundling on for the moment. Um, I thought I was going to be taking a break sometime soon, but apparently that's not happening. Um, I have some Kickstarter videos coming soon as well, and some more interesting releases, um, which I hope will keep you, you know, tuned for more, for more. And I'm looking forward to the point where I don't have any more review copies and I'm going to make some content just for fun. Um, because it's been a really long time since I got to do any of that. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure. I can't remember the last time I did it. Of course, it's fun making content about board games. So otherwise, I wouldn't do it. That's why I'm here. I really enjoy doing it. But I have a couple of series in my mind that I'd really, really like to do and to share with you. And hopefully, those will happen. Um, so yeah, so if you've got any comments or queries, um, I'm here. Feel free to shout off in the comment box below. Um, if you like what I do, please like or subscribe to the channel because I'm approaching a what I consider a decent number, which would be really cool. And until next time, I'll be here, um, hopefully creating more, you know, short and informative video reviews. Isn't that, is that, is that what I do? I think that's what I'm about at this point, isn't that? <laughs> I think so. So until next month, um, have a good month, and I look forward to hearing from you all. All right then, take care everybody, bye-bye.